Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, I am uh, discussing my learnings from Middle Discourses 2, uh, which is Sabhava Sutta, all the defilements. So this is basically a sutta which, in which Buddha has given seven ways, seven ways on how you can give up defilements, remove the defilements, right? So what are defilements? Defilements are kleshas. In the Pali word is klesh, kleshas. Right? These klesas are, are, are those things like blame, anger, resentment. These are like in seed form, they are in our unconscious. And depending upon the object that comes in front of us, these latent defilements or these klesas come up in our conscious mind. So how to give up these defilements? So who is an arhant? Arhant is the final stage of awakening, final awakening, where the person achieves, attains nirvan, right? free from birth and death. So that person is the person who is said to be the free from all mental defilement. So our goal is, and we are all in the journey, we are all work in progress, towards freeing ourselves from all defilements. So in this sutta, it's a very important sutta which, in which Buddha has given guidance on how to end up defilement. Seven different ways that Buddha has given. Right? So what Buddha says here is that mendicants, I will teach you the explanation of the restraint of all defilements. Listen and apply your mind. The 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 link to the sutta is given in the, de in the description. You can also download, take a printout and read the sutta to get more clarity. Right? So Buddha says, Mendicants, ending of defilements is for one who knows and sees, not for one who does not know and see. So basically Buddha says, rational application of mind and irrational application of mind. Buddha says, when you apply the mind irrationally, and Buddha will explain how person applies mind irrationally later in the sutta. The Buddha says, if you mind, apply the mind irrationally, then the defilements arise and once arisen, they grow. If you apply the mind rationally, then the defilements don't arise and those who have, which have already arisen are given up. Right? So it's all about where we apply our mind. This is what is called the right effort. Right? If you talk about the Noble Eightfold Path, one of the paths is the right effort. So that right effort, we need to exert, we need to apply the mind in the right way. So that defilements, unwholesome defilements do not arise. Even if they arise, they, are, they, they do not grow. Wholesome, uh, wholesome qualities arise and then they grow. Right? Okay. So then Buddha says, five, seven ways I am giving you. So the see, some defilements should be given up by seeing, some by restraint, some by using, some by enduring, some by avoiding, some by dispelling and some by developing. These are the seven different ways where you can give up the defilement. So then Buddha explains one by one. Now, first is defilements which are gi given up by seeing, right? Now, what is seeing? Seeing is not just, just seeing, right? If I see a pen or a, so I have a pen and I see a pen, this is not seeing. Seeing basically here the meaning is dasana. Dasana is the, uh, basically seeing by way of right view, right? Seeing by way of, seeing in the right view. Seeing the four noble truths, right? What is noble truths? There is suffering. There is arising of suffering through due to craving. There is a cessation of suffering that is possible. And the cessation of suffering is made possible by the noble eightfold path, right? So that seeing we need to cultivate in us, right? Seeing this nature of things, how suffering arises and how suffering falls, the impermanent nature of things, right? So when we see correctly, then what basically, so what are the defilements that Buddha is talking about here is three kinds of defilements, sensual desire, desire to be reborn and ignorance. These are some th three desires which we can, which we can give up by seeing correctly. Sensual desire, that means the seeds of lust that sprout in us. Suppose you see a beautiful woman or a beautiful uh, handsome man outside and the seeds of lust arises. And then that seeing we have to be very clear that this is suffering you know these when that lust arises this lust is suffering right so defilements of sensual desire desire to be reborn there is this desire in us to be reborn in some higher planes or luxuries or luxurious afterlife all these desires that desire to be reborn third is ignorance ignorance of this impermanent nature of existence ignorance of the fact that this creation this reality is impermanent non-self and suffering so when we are ignorant, then what happens is that we create the suffering for ourselves, right? So all these things, 
we can give up by the right view seeing rightly now what uh, what basically helps here in seeing rightly is the practice of insight meditation right every day we can do vip uh, vipassana or the insight meditation i have made videos on insight meditation how to do the sitting meditation you can check that video where i have explained how to do the sitting uh, vipassana meditation and uh, you can do the practice and during the day what we can do is more and more be mindful and see the nature of this reality of the impermanence and if we are mindful then even you know a flower which is withering is teaching us impermanence right uh, that everything there is no permanent self everything has suffering embedded within it and then we can become free right so here in this particular section buddha says how a person applies mind irrationally and then buddha says how the person can apply the mind rationally irrationally the person thinks now the kind of stupid questions person thinks did i exist in the past did i not exist in the past what was i in the past how was i in the past after being what what did i become in the past will i exist in the future will i not exist in the future these are all the questions you know what will i become of the future right or they are undecided about the present thus am i am i not what am i how am i this sentient being where did it come from and where it will go right all these questions about the past lives and the future lives and the present life the person is confused and what happens because of this applying the mind irrationally the the person develops wrong views that i have a permanent self my self survives or the view myself does not survive or the view i perceive the self with the self i perceive what is not self with the not self right all these things all these views arises about the self that it is permanent everlasting eternal and imperishable it will last forever and ever now this impermanent view that arises what it does is that due to this permanency there arises craving about external objects when i know that i am impermanent i am just a play of the five aggregates and this play is just happening then there will be no craving that will arise because i know i do not have a clear finite existence right i am just a bundle of the play of aggregates that are happening at this moment and i am also changing continuously right so that is the due to the wrong application wrong uh, wrong rash, applying the mind irrationally these kind of wrong views arise right and which keeps us stuck now rationally buddha says rationally how you apply the mind this is suffering this is the origin of suffering this is the cessation of the suffering and this is the practice that leads to the cessation of suffering and as they do so as a person applies the mind you know rationally apply the mind to those th these things they give up three factors identity view which is like the personality view doubt and misapprehension of precepts and ob observances these are called the defilement that should be given up by seeing so this is the first thing sensual desire desire to be reborn and ignorance you can give up by seeing correctly practicing more and more right view i know it may be a bit kind of a difficult this sutra is a bit, bit difficult for beginners but uh, be with it spend time with it come back to this sutra and you'll find more meanings right so that is the first uh, second is giving up by restraint what is the restraint restraint over the five senses eyes ears nose smell nose tongue and mind i ear nose tongue body and the mind these six things right restraint practicing restraint which is basically the five precepts no lying no stealing right no killing right no drinking all these precepts restraining ourselves so we can you know give up uh, all the distressing and feverish dis uh, defilements that arise for example defile defilements due to the eye can arise if i look at a beautiful woman and lust arises in me i can practice restraint that i can avoid looking at beautiful women right pra consciously mindfully or avoid looking at beautiful food um, not beautiful but very tasty food so that cravings don't arise in me right i'm just thinking of examples here right so practicing restraint on our senses these five see it's all about these five senses eyes ears you know these are sense doors right these are point these are the the inlets from where uh, the all the toxicity can come in us and can you know stimulate the defilements which lie 
within us. So practicing restraint over these sense stores, body, mind, right? So that is the defilements given up by restraint. Third defilement given up by using. Okay, what are the defilements that should be, that should be given up by using? Now there are four four uh, things where Buddha says being mindful of the use, and this is mainly for the monks, right? Uh, so being mindful of robes, right? When you have the robes, you be, are mindful that they are only for the sake of warding off cold and heat, warding off for the touch of flies, mosquitoes, mosquitoes, winds, and reptiles, and for covering up the private parts. Being reflecting rationally, they make use of the arms food, not for fun, indulgence, endowment, or decoration, but only to sustain their body, to avoid harm, and support the spiritual practice. Make use of lodgings rationally, only for the sake of warding off of the heat and you know everything. And Use of medicine supp supplies for the sake, again, reflecting ra rationally, they use them only for the sake of warding off of the pains of illness, right? So, they do not, so it's basically mindfulness of these things that they use, right? So, any distress or defilements that arise from the use of these things will go if, they, if the person, if the monk is using these things mindfully. Now, this is for the monks, but for us, lay people, again, these we can apply it to our belongings, our wealth, our, you know, our whatever we have in our life, right? The, the, the assets, you know, the positive things that we have, even positive qualities that we have, being mindfully using them so that defilements due to the use of those things do not arise. For example, wealth. You use the wealth judiciously, not spend it, you know, extravagantly or in uses where, you know, it basically causes harm for yourself and others right so so precaution kind of given use things mindfully right okay defilement given up by enduring enduring basically is that as a monk they have to live in forest and travel and everything so some things they have to endure right what are so what are the things one is enduring the cold heat hunger and thirst Second, endure the touch of flies, mosquitoes, wind, sun, reptiles. Third, endure rude and unwelcome criticism, right? Because they go for arms, food, and there are people, all kinds of people they find, right? There are good people, there are bad people, right? And then they put up with physical pain, sharp, severe, acute, unpleasant, disagreeable, and life-threatening. So even for the lay people, what? See, some things we can give up, some things we can make ourselves comfortable, but some things we have to endure. Given that this we have this body, there will be some physical, mental pain that will be there. So, what we have to also do is that as part of our practice, be enduring of, of the pain. Right? That is also, the pain is also a part of you know our practice. Allowing that pain, going deep into that pain and allowing that pain to become a part of our practice, that also we have to learn and take the pain, take the pain with us in our in our quest, in our journey towards uh, enlightenment, right? So that we can take care of that. Fifth point, defilement giving, given up by avoiding. Now, avoiding basically, Buddha gives, uh, says that as the person avoids a wild elephant, wild horse, wild ox, wild dog, snake, stump, thorny ground, pit, cliff, so a sewer, right? As the person avoids those things, Buddha says that three things the monk should avoid sitting on inappropriate seats, walking in inappropriate neighborhoods and mixing with bad friends, whatever sensible spiritual companions would believe to be a bad city. That means a monk would take care not to visit a brothel. A monk should take care not to visit an area which is like a, a shady area or a not a good area and everything. Right. So all these things a monk should be mindful and he should avoid doing that. So Buddha, so Buddha is basically what my understanding is. There is no one strategy for all defilements. Some have to be avoided by, you know, some have to be avoided, some have to be endured, some have to be used, right? All these things we have to do. Then defilement, sixth number is defilement given up by dispelling. Dispelling is basically uh, re mendicant reflects rationally, reflecting rationally doesn't tolerate a sensual, malicious or cruel thought that has arisen, but gives up, get rid of it, eliminate and obliterates it. They don't tolerate any bad, unskillful qualities that have arisen. Give them up, get rid of them. So any thought that comes up, any negative thought that comes up, 
they do not tolerate it and they get rid of it there is another video another sutta of uh, uh, made video i have made on a sutta where buddha explains how to stop negative thoughts right with different ways so that is in line with what that teaching is right so if negative thought comes in your mind we have to be skillful to either avoid or replace that thought with some other thought just don't allow it to form all those things so basically dispelling that negative thought that is point number 6 then point number 7 is defilements given up by developing now what the person has to given up uh, uh, approach is develop de- develop the seven factors of enlightenment which is mindfulness investigation of principles energy rapture tranquility immersion and equanimity right which relies on seclusion fading away and cessation and ripen as letting go so basically it is developing all the seven qualities of the uh, of the in- awakening of the enlightenment so that is the defilements which are given up by developing right so these are the seven ways different different ways where where the 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 mendicant has to uh, dispel the various uh, 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 defilements uh, get do away with the various defilements in various ways right so this is the guidance i hope this video was useful to you please do reflect in your life what you can what you need to dispel what you need to give up what you need to uh, you know uh, give up through seeing right just think reflect in your life and uh, do share it uh, in your comments any thoughts or reflections that you have on this this is a very very important sutta it's a middle discourses too right so do please reflect and uh, uh, thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya namo buddhaya